many simple studio, I did my capstone presentation on dorsal fin photographic identification and population dynamics of Prochorinus brachyurus in Hong Kong, South Africa. The objective of my study was to determine if this shark species, also known as the bronze whaler, could be identified using the notch pattern located on their dorsal fin, as you can see in this figure to the left. So we have a crown with another shark species, white shark. Each individual has a distinct notch pattern that we can use for capture mark to capture methods. And then from the data from TMR, we can long term monitor the species. So in my study, I am trying to see if that is a possibility for bronze whaler individuals. The motivation for my study is that monkeys are a very vulnerable species. In the last 70 years, we've seen a 50% decrease in their population size. They are also slow growing and late maturing. Males reach sexual maturity at age 16 to 19, while females reach sexual maturity at age 19. In addition to that, monsters only live to be 30 years old, and the gestation period is 12 months. They don't have a long time to reproduce. This shark is also found in coastal waters, making them more susceptible to overfishing and bycatch. Another motivation for our study is that there is a lack of research on this species. Um, so I am hoping with determining if they can be identified using their notch pattern, that it'll be an easier method to research this species. In my study specifically, I'm going to be looking at their migration patterns because monsters are highly migratorial um, and they only spend out of the year in South Africa. So why photo identification? Uh, photo identification is not invasive. You are not making any harm or stress on the animal. It's also less expensive because you really only need a camera to take the photographs. It's safer for you and the shark because you are not coming into contact. And then finally, it's better for long-term monitoring the tagging, the tag could fall off, or the tag signal could not be picked up by a satellite because the shark is too far in the water column. For my study design, we took photos from February 2018 to January 2022 in Hawaii, South Africa, near Dyer Island. The dorsal fin photographs were taken on shark cage diving trips. From there, the photographs were put into a software program called IdentiFin, which is specifically made to match the shark fin. From the data that the software exports, I can use it to look at population dynamics. So in my case, I am looking at transient and returning individuals. Transient individuals are seeing one year of sampling, and then returning individuals are seeing two or more because I am trying to determine if the sharks that are coming back every year to South Africa are the same sharks or if there's still new sharks coming in. For the software, the first step, as you can see in these first two photographs, is to take a picture of the dorsal fin. It doesn't matter which side of the fin you take it on because they are bilaterally symmetrical. After you take the photograph, you upload it into Photoshop where you create a color contrast between the fin and the background so the notches are distinguished. After that, you resize the photograph. That way, all of the photographs that are going into the software are standardized. Next, upload the photo into the software. And then, as you see in this bottom photo, the software will trace the notch pattern for you, but you do have the ability to correct the tracing if the software accidentally picked up the water instead. From there, the software gives the fin a code. As you can see, this bottom right photograph, this code would be 091102. So every new photograph that is coming into the database is matched with all of the other photographs that are already in the database. And then from there, the software exports matches from best to worst. So you go through all the matches. If you see the same individual, 
then you will resize the photograph. But if you cannot find a match for the photograph, then you mark the individual as new. For my software accuracy, after I've done matching all the photographs, I selected 50 random photographs from my database and I rematched them. Out of the 50 photographs, 96% of them found a match in the first 20 photographs. Of those, 78% found the match in the first three photographs. I also did a pair of t-test, which did come back significant, meaning that the software is accurate in identifying bronze Taylor individuals. For my sampling effort, um, I created a discovery curve as you can see with the gray line, which shows the new individuals. And then I also did a line in black, which shows the recites. Each point indicates a month of sampling. And then you can see where the two lines intersect. So that is also called a point of saturation, which indicates that my sample size was significant enough to get an accurate population estimate. And then with all the photographs, I identified 61 individuals. For my recite results, um, out of all the individuals, I found 84% of them were recited, meaning that they were seen two or more years. And then in this figure, I broke that down into years. So you can see over time, the new individuals decrease more and more and more, and the returning individuals are increasing, meaning that the majority of the individuals that are coming back to South Africa are the same. And so it's the same population that are migrating out of South Africa and then coming back to South Africa annually. Can I acknowledge it? That's my mentor, Mary. Thank you.